Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if you're just joining us or just signing on, you're watching the New York State 10 Ball Championship. We're coming to you live from Mr. Q Billiards in Lynnhurst, New York. I'm upstate Al. We're about to watch this match right here in front of us on the live stream. Earl Strickland versus Mike Edel. It is a race to nine. Both players are on the winner's side. As they shake hands, and Mike Edel is going to come out slamming. I've never seen this man play before. But to play in this event, knowing that there's so many of these great shooters in here, you got to know your stuff and strut it at the same time. As Mike Edel breaks and makes a few balls. We're going to scramble right through a lot of the sponsors. AZ Billiards, live stream news group on Facebook. Simona's Cloth, Kings of Vapor, the Tap League. Mike Gettle in the stretch for the two ball. Look at the seven, three, and eight. The triple nickel combination shot. And we might see it. Mike did attempt it, but left it for Earl now. Earl's got a control. The three ball also. We'll see the 10 ball get spotted. It's a cold shot. I'm going to try to get a picture of the brackets. Step out for a second or two. You guys keep your eye on the match, and I'll update the score. As we're going to watch Earl get back up the table. Cold shot. And Mike actually fired the four ball into the wrong corner pocket. And Earl Strickland faced the four balls. Let me finish out this uh, first game, and then I'll get a shot of the brackets, and I'll send them off to CMBWSU, who will uh, attempt when he gets a second. I know he's busy behind the scenes. Uh, possibly get those posted on uh, AZ Billiards or on Facebook, if not both, uh, if he has time. says no problem one nothing in favor of Earl Strickland stand by folks I'm going to take a shot at the brackets
Okay, the brackets have been sent out. And we are back. Ball in hand, look at the 110. If Earl elects to play the 110 combination, he could put a fast beat up on his side. And that's what he's going to attempt to do, play the 110 combination and plays it very well. Earl Strickland now in the lead, 2-0 to zero over Mike Edel. Guys, some of these matches will be uploaded to YouTube. The name of the YouTube channel is AZB. T Vision on YouTube, and you can go over there and subscribe to the YouTube channel and click the little gear, and you can elect to get a notification when we upload matches. That's the only notification you will get as Neil Paxton is working his way back in to the commentator's booth. have the pleasure of having Neil back in. Push is called. I don't know about you, but I don't think there's any reward here unless he has enough of that one to play the three. Earl Strickland play a safe, probably behind the 10 and just nudge the one just a tad. Like that. I should be like that. Okay, we got the Nielster back in the booth. Neil, welcome aboard. Thank you, Alan. Two nothing in favor of Earl over Mike Edel. Do you know Mike Edel at all, Neil? <clears throat> I did. He gave him the seven once. Just played a three ball combination. One four, this so this crazy. kid got a lot better, man. Well, he doesn't look like a kid. Well, I mean, Not one of those <laughs> anybody younger than me looks. Billy go. Yeah. <laughs> no, but he's edit. playing. He's playing good. Yeah. I don't think I would play him anymore with the seven. And there's the brackets. That's the best I can do, folks. Take a picture with uh, my phone uh, off of the electronic brackets. So there's a glare behind me, but I try to get it done as quick as possible. So please excuse the photographer. No hit. Ball in hand is dangerous from this point. Yeah, I like girl here. We're yeah. balling out. Oh, no. Well, he's, he's got it up. I think he's got it up. Wow. No. Why did he do that? I don't understand. Well, he tried to get to that little. Yeah, but why was he even playing the the, the four or five combination? Why why would he play position there when he could play the four in, in the right corner? What a shot. Because wow, he's I Earl. Love, I love it when he gets mad. <laughs> Well, he gets a little upset at himself. Right. And every, everybody should. <laughs> right. When you get out of line, don't you get a little upset that you got in the position you're yeah. in? Yeah. But I can't do that, what he just did. <laughs> you know, you got to find your way out. That's, that's the thing. And that's what I just was saying and, um, for the last couple of matches. When he gets out of line, he gets right back in line. And, you yeah. know, if he's got a shot to do so. Yeah, but he just, like, jacked up, jumped that ball in, like, like it was straight in. Like, like you're supposed to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Earl. That's Earl. I love Earl. I think everybody does, you know. There's, there's people that just uh, love him for Earl. 
Earl's a genius. I would say so. Probably one of the reasons that all these extensions are being made today. That's right. You know. Unbelievable. Really is. He was the first one to do that, and if he had gone to a manufacturer and did it, he'd be a multimillionaire right now. Well, in any case, he's definitely put a multi-game up. Yeah. <laughs> Three to nothing in favor of Earl Strickland. Yeah. Guys, we're coming to you live from Mr. Q Billiards in Lindenhurst, New York. You're watching the New York State 10-ball championship. Anybody could have played, but it's definitely open pro caliber players that we have here. We had 17 players. Jose Burgos did elect to try to end this in one day, which is a good call. Oh, it's going to be one day? Yeah. Well, 17 players, you know, to lag, to yeah, lag, right. you know, drag it out two days. Um, right. When we could finish in one. No, I think that's a good idea. Looks like he broke and didn't drop nothing. So Mike's going to the table. Well, do you try to play the 110 or you just roll up and play safe? <clears throat> what do you play Here? Do you try I don't know what he's six? doing. Well, he tried the 110 is what yeah, he that's, did. That's, I would have played safe there. <clears throat> I would have tried to play safe there. That was a low percentage shot. You, you don't take those shots against Earl. Yeah. Cue ball finds a drink. Ball in hand once again for Earl Strickland. All right, let's see if Earl gets out here. He's actually an even money favorite to get out here. All right, Jameson, have a safe trip, and we'll talk to you soon. Keep us abreast of what's going on in your world. He plays those angles so perfect. He could probably just stop the cue ball right there. Or maybe go forward a little bit. Well, one good sign is the room is starting to fill up. I like that. You've got a lot of spectators wow, sitting around watching. Look, look at this shot. Wow. That's the same result. I, I don't know why he's doing that. He's, he's hot dogging. Here comes another big shot then. Those are the kind of shots, you know, you got to hit them straight in the hole on the diamond tables. That that English, that drawer English. Will. <laughs> and he's getting lucky with these leaves, too. But he doesn't see that. No, he's, he'll be the first to admit it. Right. You know. Right. Now he's got a, he, he's supposed to play safe here. He should roll up on the nine here. Let's see what he does. That's the shot. Two rail. Now he's supposed to just kick this ball in because he's Earl. Two rails. Yeah. Two rails. Get perfect shape for the five. Go around the seven. Get between the seven and six and come right up <laughs> for the six in the bottom <laughs> right-hand corner. <laughs> the Earl. Watch the shot. If he hits it with strong speed, it's a very possible shot. He hit it. Wow, he hit a good. He was just going to take it. Yeah, shot. he hit a good. He, you know, he was a favorite to make it, but, but you know, this table is is unforgiving. It's a little tricky this table, which I happen to love. I love those tricky tables. You got to figure it out. What do you mean by tricky table? Tricky meaning that. You know, the rails play a little bit different. The pockets are cut a little different. You know, you got to 
you can't assume that you're just going to hit the ball and it's going to go in like on a big bucket, you know, with fast cloth and just, you know, hit the diamond and it goes in. Tricky table. Yeah. Just, uh, never heard that expression used quite that way with that meaning, but I guess you're 100% right. I'm I, in no position to question the pull detective on well, any kind of terminology you never heard you of like trick tables like guys going on the road and they had to play these guys on these like trick tables trying to trap them on a tight box or something like that yeah tight yeah. box or a trick table where trick. like one of the rails is like bent a little and well you know you what? go down south there's a lot of trick tables down there yeah well you know what? and you got to play on their table well then you know if uh if you elect to get on that table and get in that game prior to going over there and actually well the smart the, the smart guys will get there fight. the day before now I was at a tournament in fact you I think you were up there of course I was there when um, <laughs> Keith McCready challenged everybody up there in Connecticut and Alapena that's right stepped up and Alapena thank God I showed up late too <laughs> after he beat Alapena the first headset Alapina came back to Keith and he says, "I'll play you." Or, uh, he says, "I'll play you, Keith, but let, let's play over there." And right. Alapina pointed right. to another table on the opposite—I mean, like way out in the opposite side of the pool room. Right. And Keith was standing 50 feet to 75 feet away from the table, and he says, "Oh, he says, I see you want to trap me up on that tight box in the back." He says, "No, if you want to play me again, you get back in that private room and play on the same table you really? just lost." I thought he played him on that table. No, he played him. In I the thought private he beat room. him on that table. No, it was in the private room. Both of them. Oh, maybe, yeah. I don't really so, remember that, but I, I was there. I was definitely there. Keith McCready beat him, though. Oh, yeah. Yes, he did. And beat Santos, too, by the way, that day. Yeah. In both games, nine ball and banks. And uh, I would, you know, I usually, like, back in those days when I was gambling, I would bet on uh, Alapena. But I showed, I, I showed up late. Good thing you showed up late, like you said. And, <laughs> and after watching Keith play for the first time, I was like, wow. Keith was in gin mode. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> Every Table time Lapina played safe, the Keith backed the Drew. ball and just Table ran out. Five, right. That voice you hear in the background is Jose Burgos calling out some matches. Oh, Earl. Oh, Earl. Roll the. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I miss watching Keith. Keith was such an entertaining player. You know, characters, one of the best characters in pool. Not only was he a great player, but he could just walk around the table and keep talking and just keep running out on you. And you could keep talking to him, and he'll talk to you. And he'll just keep running out on you. <laughs> and, like, you're looking at the guy like, am I trying to shark him? I don't know, but is he sharking me because he doesn't miss? You feel like you're in a nightmare. <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> Man. Yes, Keith rolled with the bus. There, there was some, you know, that's what, that's one of the things Poole is kind of missing. Entertainment players. Entertaining players? Entertainment players. Entertainment players. Entertaining. In Enter other words, entertaining players. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. Was a showman. Because, you know, like when you watch pool and you're just like sitting there and, you know, sometimes it could be. Well, Alex Bagelion is still right, entertaining to watch. Right. And, and that, that's what I'm saying. Like that relationship of, of uh, interaction with people who are watching and like the audience, it makes it exciting. Is that why half the audience tunes into Earl and half tune in because so. they like him? Yeah, it's a I very think good so. possibility. He is a showman. He's so. a crowd. He draws the crowd. I mean, look at like any other pro. There's a lot of pros that draw crowds. Yeah. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Entertainment is a big part of it. I think there should be more audience participation. I like the, I would. Me like, too. I want to hear roars. You know. Me uh, too. When, thing, when good shots and that's made. what I miss about those guys. They used to get the audience into it. So they were performing a show. Playing in a tournament. Playing in a tournament and playing great. Yeah. yeah. And playing great. Try to find a European player like that. They're too stiff. 
No. They, you they, don't think so? I, I, think don't, so. I don't think they're too stiff. Uh, I think they're I'm not going to say stiff. that they take the game more serious than any other player. Um, but there are European entertainment, uh, uh, entertaining players. Like whom? Well, you know, uh, Daz plays it pretty entertaining. Who? Daz, Darren Who's, Appleton. Yeah. Yeah, he, actually, you know, he is. Entertaining. He is. Um, depends on what kind of entertainment you're talking about. Well, I guess it boils down to. I get entertainment just by watching a good player shoot. Pool, you know, I, I find it uh, interesting, and I think that's I what do keeps too. me going. I do too, but I think you could play and entertain the people who are watching at the same time. Well. I don't know. There's so many different ways of looking at it, though. It's, it's you know. Four to one now. Oh, Strickland. Four to lead. one. And Earl's, Earl's seems like he's racking like, like they're filming a movie. <laughs> high run says, high run says, uh, I sing and break dance when I play. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that, I think that's awesome. <laughs> um, you know what? You, you want to talk about an entertaining player. Uh, rest in peace, Gypster. The Gypster. Oh, he was an entertaining player. Entertaining player. Fun to watch. And everybody, and that's what people love about him. You know, he would talk to you if you wanted to. Talk. And it wasn't enough for Shisa's way. He wanted to win on the level. Well, but now want, wait a minute. What do you he mean? He wanted to put a show on. <laughs> well, that was that was part of that was part of showmanship. Gipster. That was that was part of Gipster. Yeah. Uh, if you were going to play the Gipster, uh, I remember when he used to make matches where shocking was allowed. That's right. <laughs> and, and that's one thing he taught me. <laughs> Gipster was the best. That's the one thing he taught you. <laughs> Gypsy was the best, rest in peace. Yeah. Yep. Gypsy would, Gypsy would come up with sayings, um, would come up with sayings uh, during his match that you'd never heard in your life. It's unbelievable. You know? The things that he thought of. I mean, they would just come out. That It was his natural... Gift. He should have been a movie star. The first time I ever heard. If they ever made a pool movie, he should have been in it. Oh, he would have definitely been in a reality show. 100%. Uh, without a doubt. Did you see they, they were making a reality show in uh Yes, in Steinway. They shot some footage. Yeah. But the very first time. The very the, first time I saw somebody actually. Uh, not very first time, but one of the phrases that I remember there with Gypsy that, that stuck in my head through the years was he was playing somebody, and I believe it was in the Golden Q or maybe Masters. One of the rooms. Anyway, you know, we've been to so many rooms. Right. And his opponent broke and scratched, and as the cue ball kind of cliffed hang, it was rolling. It was definitely going to be a scratch, with no doubt. But it was like at that roll where it was just like slow rolling. And Gypsy ran up to the table and he said, "Oh, oh!" He said, "Let him in, let him in. Lifetime membership, let him in. Lifetime yeah, I membership." Yeah, I remember that one yeah, too. That that kind of stuck in my head. Uh, but there was many more, many more. You know, if 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 you were gambling with with the Gypster, and uh, he was beating you, or if he wasn't beating you, or if you were still even, and you happen to miss an easy shot, he would say, hey, sir, excuse me, what are you doing tomorrow? I'd like to make an <laughs> yeah. appointment with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, there, was a, there was a lot of stuff. It's all wow. part of the game. Banks are open for Mike. Okay, five to one, Earl Strickland. You're watching the New York State 10 Ball Championship. We're coming to you live from Mr. Q. Lindenhurst, New York. If you're in the area and you're looking for a little action or want to stop in a room, make sure to put Mr. Q. And Mike's at the table and he's running out. He's shooting the three. But do you see the three or is he snookered here behind the eight? I can't tell. It looks like he's got a good part of the three. But, but he can't make it. 
You can't shoot it in the corner, right? I, I think he's debating on how to get to the five. You know, you can oh, play. This, you can this play. This is a tough shot. You can play to run in English and try to get down. I have to hit this with a lot of inside. What, what are you doing here? Since oh, the banks were open, he tried to bank that too. Yeah, that was. Is he a bank player? I think so. They didn't bank that very well. Yeah. But, you know, he tried. Let's see what Earl can do. Trap him up on the ten. Don't forget, Mike DeShane is still in this. Jason Shaw is still in it. Matt Craw. We got a lot of entertaining coming your way. A lot of entertainment. entertainment. <laughs> And don't forget, folks, uh, this live stream is coming to you in a co-production between AZBTV and uh, NYC Grind. That's NYCGrind.com. Mm. Big shout out to Jerry T. Allison Fish and the crew. So, Earl's got ball in hand now on the three, and uh, he's a favorite to get out here. Well, he's got to get on the low side. He's got to get down close to the rail, and he's oh, got he's, the Midas he's touch a here. Big favorite. Let's see if he's going to go to the top rail and come right now. Okay. Played that simple that time. Look at this. He's going into the eight. Yeah, but he caught the good side of the eight. You know, yeah. sometimes you get trapped up behind Yeah, the I'm eight. surprised he actually did that. He, he got fortunate. You know. He didn't want to run into it. Yeah. He got fortunate. Yeah. No. Well, it's going to be six to one in favor of Earl Strickland. Earl the Pearl is another entertaining player, yeah. isn't he? Yeah, Earl, Isn't he? right now Earl's going through people like a bad virus. Earl gives lessons in uh, Steinway Billiards, and I'll tell you, he's such a great teacher. He's got so much knowledge and so much patience when he's teaching. He's an excellent teacher. He sure is. He really is. If I was young coming up in pool today... I'd be uh, I'd be there every day. Yeah. Well, Earl's driven lessons uh, out of Steinway. I believe it's seventy-five dollars an hour, minimum of two hours. A minimum of two I, hours. I yeah. think so. Yeah. So you can you can get in touch with Steinway Billiards in Astoria, Queens, and uh, see if you can make an appointment if you want to spend a few hours learning from the Pearl. I can tell you one thing from my point of view, and my point of view. At that time, was probably two tables away from where we were in the commentators' booth, and then I happened to have a chance of watching Earl give a lesson, not only once but twice, um, different times. And uh, he goes into science. I'll tell you what, he he will watch your stance, your stroke. He will examine everything you do on your own, and then start to fix and tweak things. And I, what I mean, look at what your how you're stroking and, and your technique he uh he's very analytical oh about everything he's an examiner oh, i mean yeah almost anal about certain things but uh you know he's a perfectionist see all these young kids coming up and pull today they should be they should all be running over there for lessons.
How do you hit it? Like the pearl. And once again, Earl runs out. 71st Street, folks. Looking to get up in the world. Earl the Pearl is now at seven. So here I am in Long Island watching Earl Strickland. Does it get any better? And I'm almost starting to feel a little bad for this kid, Mike, but you know something? He knew what he was getting into. Listen, for a couple of dollars, you're playing a world champion. This is a, right now he's on the winner's side. Uh, yeah, he's winner's he side beat now. a great player, Mike Wong. Yeah, that's right. Mike Edel beat Mike Wong. For those of Mike, you know, Mike Wong was, Mike uh, Wong. He, he was away for, I think, uh, seven months. He was in uh, the Philippines getting lessons from uh, all the top Filipinos. Right. And this kid just beat him. Maybe it's a little bit of an intimidation factor. Yeah, I don't you know. know. I Could don't be. Know. You know. Well, he probably hasn't competed in a while. Listen, you're playing a, a, a player that you you know as well as anybody else. You get up there and bobble a shot or miss a shot and leave him a shot. You know, and when he gets to the table and punishes you with one oh, or two yeah. racks, you're thinking twice about that next hard shot that you might attempt to make. Oh, you yeah. know? So it could be a little bit of intimidation. Absolutely. Factor. That's why I used to go to the bar and do two shots of tequila if I was playing. Well, I, I don't promote that at all. I'm not promoting uh, it. I'm just saying that's what I did, but, you know, not that I do that anymore, but it was fun. What's two shots of tequila? Well, you know, you got up-and-coming players that are 12, 13, 11 that might be listening in. Right. So. I try to keep that out of there. Well, I, I, I definitely do not recommend the tequila. <laughs> Thank you, Neil. <laughs> I'll tell you, the kids coming up today are much stronger than we were. We're, we're. We were like dinosaurs back then. These kids today are fearless. Well, that fearless there missed the nine ball. Earl Strickland going to come to the table. He looks like he might have a shot into the side pocket. If not, he's definitely got the shot in the corner. You heard Earl call it nine in the side. Nine in the side. How's he going to play the nine in the side here? If he said he's going to play it in the side, just agree with him. Wait, maybe he switched. He might have switched up. He's playing it up in the he corner. He was bluffing. I know he's shooting it in the corner. <laughs> he was bluffing. Wow, that ball's good. Well, you know what? Earl said he's playing bad. Meanwhile, the, the ball's good. <laughs> he said he's playing terrible. He leads here 7-1. <laughs> yeah. He's the first one to criticize himself. You know, and that's just Earl. Yeah, but the ball skidded. And as soon as he hit it with English, it's good. Mike got on the 50 here. Yeah, he'll make it. Okay. Mike Edel. Another bead. Earl's not going to like it. Seven to two. Seven to two. When Earl, Earl wants to beat you, he wants to beat you he into does. the ground. Yeah. He doesn't want your nose above water. He's going to step on your head when he gets you down. Uh, yeah. You know, that, yeah. that's the type of attitude you got to have. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. I usually try to make my opponents laugh, and if I get them laughing, I, I feel like I could beat them. <coughs> I 
Well, you're capable of beating just about anybody on the earth. You know, when you're right, you're right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But I can't beat Earl. I wish you would have got here early enough to get in the tournament. Yeah, I would like to see No, I, I could have got in. Oh, did you? Did you I, I could have, but I changed my mind. All right. I was going to get in and play, and then I said, nah, let these guys, you know, these guys are playing every day, and they're, you know, they're really hungrier than I am right now. Okay. So what have you been doing with yourself? Watching pool. Good. Yeah. Well, every once in a while, I would like to see your name up there uh, promoting pool a little bit more if you got some time on your hands. So we can get the word out a little bit more, you know? Yeah. Well, 7 to 2. Earl Strickland. What's the next match coming up? We don't know, but we might be able to get word in a few minutes from Jose. Okay, no hit. Let's see. This, this table's a little troublesome. Not impossible. It looks like the three and the four got the pockets to go into. Well, but you know, you still got to be a mechanic and uh, well, be able to maneuver. He's got to play position to to shoot the three probably in the side and break out the four ten. But well, unless unless the that, yeah, that's what yeah. I'm thinking. Three in the side. Now if he no, he didn't get on the right angle here. I well, he think. might have the four nine combination. I don't I don't know. No, right. not on this angle. Now he's got to do something funny. Do something funny. How about roll up and play safe? Nah. Earl likes to off get out. Floor. He might fire this ball on the side, come off the top rail, and try to break it up. But I don't know what Earl's thinking. If I knew what he was thinking, I'd be a champion. Look at Earl. Okay. So he's either got the 4-9, or he's, he can elect to play safe. He wanted to get down. I think the 4 is frozen to the 10, though. He wanted to come down a little bit further so he can just stop the cue ball on the 10 and bank the 4. See what he's got. He might have to pull it out. I guess he did. Yeah. I guess it wasn't frozen. That was a great shot anyway. Just to come off the top rail and get position, line up for that combo. I don't know how he does it. Just He's hitting everything in the center of the pocket, and he's playing bad, folks. He's playing bad. Back cut to six. Imagine if he plays the he's playing it up in the corner. Look at the touch. Kill the rock. Umber the shot on the seven. Earl Strickland. Legend of pool. A legend of pool. Earl Strickland. Wow. We, we got this recorded. Wait till you hear your own voice saying that. Well, he is. Yeah, yeah, I would have to agree. He's definitely a legend. He is. It's him and Ephraim going down in history. Okay, Earl the Pearl now reaches eight. Folks, there you have it. Let's we watch Pete Tascarella walk into place. I'm surprised he didn't get in this tournament. AZBillions.com, Simonis, Simonis Claw, Aramis Balls. Kings of Vapor, the top league, live stream news. Lakasi, Lakasi Hybrid Custom Cues. Please, if you'd like to pay them a visit on their website, and uh, let them send them an email, send them a quick thanks uh, for supporting um, live streaming. Because without them, believe me, we wouldn't be on the road as we got to get back to the action. Mike Edel set the break in game 11. The so. Ball. Earl, Earl needs one, right? Earl's on the hill? It is a race to nine. Earl has eight. Wow. He's on right? the hill. He's on the hill. Yeah. He is. And uh, Mike Edel has two. Just by the way, just to make <laughs> <laughs> wake up a little bit. <laughs> 
Well, yeah. you like entertainment, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mr. Lomax, I sure will. I'll pass that along. Uh, if I can grab his attention, he's standing right in front of the stream table. I'll give you a shot of him. Let's see if I can uh, take a quick shot, give you Steve Lomax a shot. There's, there's Petey right there. The gray hat. Hey, Pete. Pete, look at the camera. Say hello. Over here. Over here. Say hello. Steve Lomax says hello. Lomax. Steve Lomax. Hey, say hello. Yeah. <laughs> and there you go, Steve. <laughs> Giving you a shout out. <laughs> <laughs> we get personal here, huh? Entertainment at its best. As we watch the world champion, Earl Strickland, shoot the five. He's on the hill. He's out. I wouldn't even make him shoot these. You wouldn't make him shoot them? Nah. Listen, for my money, you're making him shoot these. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> for yours, you can do whatever you want. I've seen him do this a thousand times. <laughs> Letting the stroke out. Wow. It's like he's got the cue ball on a string. And uh, Mike says, that's enough, Earl. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Please let me add it as hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> so Earl Strickland uh, takes that down <laughs> nine to two. We still have a lot of entertainment coming your way. We have Mike DeShane. We still got Mikey Wong. We got uh, Jason Shaw still in it, Matt Croft. So as soon as we know the next matchup, we'll let you know. That's it. Is that Dave Brow? Is that Dave Brow over there? Oh, no, that's not Dave. Okay. All right, folks, we'll be right back. Let's stop.